In three, two, one. We are, I believe, officially going live here on Zoom, setting up your webinar for Facebook Live. So if you're listening in, we are doing a live podcast, Tackle Tuesday with myself, Joe Simons, like diamonds. We've got Luke Simons, Tony Acevedo, and our boy, hey. Wyatt Parcel. You see it we, on there? Dog, we are officially gone. live. We are officially live. So if you're listening to the podcast, this will also be on video somewhere on the Facebook somewhere on probably YouTube eventually and certainly on uh, uh, on the podcast. So, so there's, only, Tuesday. there's there's like a four second delay from the phone. So questions will be coming in and we'll see them about four seconds afterwards. So this will be, this will be fun. Yeah. So let's kick it off while we wait for some people to join us. Hopefully some great friends. We, uh, we announced yesterday on Instagram that we have this really cool Yeti cup. Our friends at Reef and Reel made this for us. If you guys are watching, you can see this. And it was an Instagram free giveaway. All you had to do was follow us, follow Reef and Reel, and tag two friends. So let's see if we can stream and share my screen all at the same time without completely imploding something. So can you see my Instagram page? We got it. Oop. Okay. Okay. That's a good start. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to refresh just because we did say 12 o'clock in case a couple of people came in last minute and we get to click this. This is going to pull up the actual page. You can see it's 838 views and a few hundred comments. And then this cool little thing called app sortios. Thank you, Wyatt, for uh, telling me about this. I get to paste that in here. I need it once to test it, make sure it works. So we don't look like a fool while we're going live. And I'm going to hit loading. Oh, uh, is this a test? No, let's go for it. You guys ready? See who won? So let's do it. This is going to, I've already put in the, the uh, settings where you have to at least tag two people. And we are going to see who is about to win this. And we'll ship this out to you hopefully uh, tomorrow. Participants, 12. Wait, there's got to be a whole lot more than 12. What in the world? you got to be kidding me. Settings. I grabbed the wrong one. Jeez. While we're waiting, we have, uh, yeah, I see. Uh, oh, Greg. you know, I did. I grabbed the wrong one. Ooh, hoo, 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 yes. that was close. All right. We have I'm Greg Ramco this. like AFCO on here. So uh, welcome, Greg. What's up, Greg? All right, let's try this again. Whew, that was close. It's like there's no way there's only 12. All right. Start. Okay. So it's, it's, this is scanning that page to make sure that you have tagged two people and are following both us and Reef and Reel. It's taking five minutes with all these people, and there's no way it's going to take five minutes. It's all gone. Do you guys have these cups yet, by the way? Have you seen the new tops? That, you know, my, my old school Yeti cup didn't have that protective piece. And I guess all the new ones have that now. Can you, I don't know if you can see my screen or not. Are they the, the magnet ones, I presume, where you can actually take it off and clean it easier too? Yeah, it feels like a magnet. I don't have one. Tony, Wyatt? Yeah, mine has a magnet on it. It just pops off. Guy. Real tough guy. Yeah, I've got one of those. I, I do believe it does have the magnet. Looks like this right. cup. Here we go. Can you guys see this list? Mm -hmm. 288 participants. All right. And so, see and, here. And so see we, have a lot of, we have a lot of people on, Joe, that weren't here before. If you can uh, remind everybody what we're doing. Actually, you know what? Um, we got excluded duplicates. Um, doggone. Minimum mentions yet, yeah, too. How did this thing lose it? Dang. Well, at least you guys are going to see what really happens. So, um, so, so right now we're, we're doing a, a giveaway uh, and this is going to kick off a tackle Tuesday. So we're going to be here answering live questions. Um, so any questions you have about tackle equipment, uh, be ready to ask questions or go ahead and ask them and, uh, and we'll be checking the comment feed below. And we're kicking it off first by giving away this salt strong Yeti cup by our friends at reef and reel. So now we're going to hit start and see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Rob D. McDiddy 3. He tagged his two people. Rob D. McKitty 3. Boo, yeah. He's got a, uh, oh, that was a casking shirt on. It's a, uh, never mind. 
Dude, uh, huge congrats, Rob. We will be reaching out to you to get your address. And uh, I will try to see if we can flip this Zoom. Stop share. Does that go back to us? Yep. Dang, you got to love when something works. Scared me after that, uh, that app thing wasn't getting the right people in. All right, so we're giving away the cup. Let's talk about some tackle. Luke? Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, I, mean, I basically been – so we have some uh, a new lure, a lure coming out, and so I've been doing a lot of testing with that, and, and that's been good. But No, you can't thing. just say that, dude. We have a lure coming – come on, like, yeah, we, got, we got a prototype we've been testing for a while. Like, this is a tease, dude. Yeah, and, and so that's been working, but and, and uh, it's it's a, just to give the type of lure, uh, and that's a it's a, a big thing that we want to talk about. Uh, this chat is the type of lure is extremely important, and you need to match the right type of lure to the conditions. And so this lure in particular, I have one over here. The the new one is a, is a jerk bait, a soft plastic jerk bait, a split tail, not a paddle tail, and where it's been working extremely good is up in the shallows, and specifically when it's calm and clear conditions, right? So like for sight fishing, this is my number one go-to. Um, even for get, getting some big big redfish on this flat that uh, a lot of guides have been hammering with, uh, with cut bait and live bait, this has been the only lure that has been working. But if it's not calm and clear, or if I'm fishing deeper water, like more than two feet, then I'm using the Slam Shady Paddle Tail. So that, like, that, is, that is what I've been having the best. Obviously I've been testing a bunch of lures in between, there's a Slam Shady Paddle Tail rigged on a jig head. Oh, really good. Yeah. Slam Shady, baby. And if you guys haven't claimed your free pack, we got a whole nother batch in actually last night. So slamshady.com, we have some more free ones. It's first come, first serve. It's limited time. And if you've already claimed your free one, please don't do it again. We're actually tracking that stuff, and we do not send them. And we even keep your little shipping charge. Yeah, because we, we lose money on every transaction. So, yes, yeah, we're not a, this is not a charity. What we're doing is putting them in your hands to prove this works. I mean, our whole mission is to get more people out there fishing and giving you a lure that makes it so, so simple to catch fish that even a seven-year-old could do it and in hopes that you buy more. Let's just be honest. Like, once again, we're, we're losing money in hopes that you buy more. And stats have proven that most everyone who buy or gets one pack buys more and or joins the club to save 20% to keep buying more. And uh, as Luke said, now we have a new lure that's going to complement this. Oh, he went there. He just there did it. it. He just did it. There it is. So yeah, this has been incredibly good for the shallows, right? Rigged on a weighted hook. But a fishing deeper water, slam shading the jig head has been really tough to beat. And the really cool thing coming out soon is what I've been doing is I've always wanted to see how fish hit these lures underwater. So, I rigged it. I got one of those underwater cameras and this is literally the rig where there's like two feet of line behind. So I mount the camera on the line. I've been casting the camera out and uh, it launches. And so I've been literally fishing this. And uh, like last time we went out, I caught about a dozen trout with the camera right in front of it. So I have, I have a lot of cool underwater footage of the trout coming up and, and smacking it. One of which was getting, eat, was a shark was trying to eat it on the way in. It was, it was crazy. So fun videos coming up soon. And for you insiders who are in the community have already seen quite a few of our, our big fish picks yeah. that, that, that we've caught using this lure. And I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the name if you're on here. It's called the Alabama Leprechaun. Yes, the Alabama Leprechaun coming to the shop stop, sh uh, the Salt Strong shop very, very, very soon. We've uh, we spent a lot of time developing this. It actually has a, quite a few custom features that you will never see anywhere else, including a custom scent that is not just like sprayed on, not just dipped. It is actually built in to the mold. And I were really, really pumped for you to see it. As Luke said, he's had trouble catching small fish with it. And uh, every time that you go usually fish in the, the sunset, and I'm here with the, the three young kids, on my end, Luke's like, dude, I just caught another big trout, another big red. They had that 40 something inch snook that nailed it and ended up uh, jumping off. Big old flounder. I mean, this is like only catching big fish, which is really interesting. It's been good. And, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm seeing some questions starting to come in. So let's go ahead and start hammering some of those down. So, oh, Tony, this one this is Tackle Tuesday. Yeah. And, uh, Tony, this one, this one I think would be good for you. You did that Stratic CI4 review. And uh, this is from uh, from Greg Gramco, my Gafco, and uh, he he said, would you replace the Shimano Stratic CI4 plus bearings 
with OEM bearings or is there a better option? Mine keeps uh, getting rough uh, despite cleanse oil. And yeah, I would definitely go with some higher end bearings uh, just from experience. I've had the same issues with the CI4 Plus with the bearings getting really rough, uh, whether they're the ones in the reel or the roller bearing. So if you can, um, I'd probably take it to a real shop and get their opinion on brands. I'm not too sure about specific brands, but there are some better options out there. Definitely. Yeah. I personally have gone away from the CI4s. I, I've, I love them. They're my number one reels for many years and the bearing problem has been just totally disappointing me every time. And I, so I bought the CI4 at the same time I bought a Daiwa Fuego. CI4 is $230. The Fuego is $99. My Fuego is still running real smooth. My Shimano's, you can hear it, you know, 30 yards away. Yeah, I have one, actually have one here. I just bought the FLs uh, a few months back and replaced them uh, with this, replaced the CI4 Plus with the FL. And I mean, you can hear how noisy it is. For me, it's the line roller. That. The it, line roller would be that one right there. Yeah. And my buddy actually had one. It was driving both of us nuts while we were fishing because every time he'd go to reel, it sounded like sandpaper on his reel. And it turned out it was that little bearing right, or that, yeah, the little bearing that's right in there. And you could easily free spin it and you'd hear it like just crunching and grinding. Mm. It, it was horrible. <laughs> we couldn't figure it out till we got off the water and I took a look at it and took the line off just started spinning it, spun the uh, bearing on the roller, and it, that's where the noise was coming from. Yeah, one, one good way to, to test the, if it's the roller bearing, because in many cases it is, and that's actually pretty easy to fix, is just to literally get the reel. This is a different reel, obviously. But just keep the spool down and grab the line, and that way you, could, you can actually spin the line. You know, I can just pull on the line, and it's moving the bearing. This one is very smooth. It's a new reel, no problem. But if it did have that issue, as I'm doing this right here, you would hear the sandpaper or like sand, whatever's in there, you'd, you'd hear it. So yeah. quick and easy way to make sure that, oh, Otis is, Otis, no, hey, don't eat it. <laughs> Otis, Otis is about going to eat after Slam right Shady. <laughs> Everybody loves that Slam Shady. Even Otis likes the Alabama Leprechaun. Oh, that was Leprechaun. Did yeah. he bite the tail off? Yeah. Did he really uh, bite the tail off? No, that was courtesy of a puffer fish. Oh, I was about to say, that's hilarious. But, but, and to that point too, this right here has been responsible for a lot of my biggest fish. So the redfish have been eating the tailless one best and I've caught more over 20 inch trout than I ever have in Tampa Bay. Most of which like, it seems like they like the smaller profile and probably because it's springtime, the bait fish are smaller, um, but it's, do not throw it away when the tail gets gets claimed by a puffer. A lot of times they're doing you a favor. Yep, and a quick quick plug and reminder for all of our 13,000 plus, we just actually broke through 13,000 Insider members uh, on Monday, actually Monday morning. And you guys all get 20% off everything we're talking about. I mean, I think now we have 20% off pretty much every rod, reel, line, lure, everything, cast us, everything you can imagine we've got 20% off and just one more reason to become an insider member on top of the fact we're literally showing you where to fish every week. You have an amazing community and network. You have all the exclusive tips and the little courses, but you also now get 20% off pretty much every manufacturer that we know of. And if you have one that, that you've some small one that you like, uh, let us know. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can cut a deal with, uh, with them on your behalf as well. So just one more reason to become an insider member and insiders. Like I heard from one of you, you saw one of our views and you went to like, I don't know, Bass Pro or somewhere, nothing is Bass Pro or Amazon, but why not save 20%? Uh, and he was like, oh man, I completely forgot about that. So always a good reminder. We got it. It's right there in your dashboard as you're logged in as an insider, exactly how to get that discount instantaneously, baby. All right. Next question. Alex Murphy asked, um, Tony, this will be another, or maybe uh, Tony or Wyatt. I'm not, um, uh, this is about kayak fishing. I, I don't, I haven't done kayak fishing in a while. Um, looking for the best kayak, bang for the buck, for stability. Currently have an Emotion Stealth, which is not very stable, and would like to upgrade to something that, uh, you know, can stand and cast from to get better at, uh, you know, sight fishing. Options, he's found Ocean Kayak Prowler, 
Vibe Seaghost, Old Town Predator, Hobie Outback, Feel Free uh, Lure. I never heard of that one. And then uh, any other suggestions? And then secondly, is a pedal drive uh, worth the extra cost? All right. So that's a lame question, huh? And a lot of options. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. When it comes to a kayak specifically, it's really personal preference more than anything. But as far as stability goes and looking for something, if you're um, on a budget, definitely the Ocean Ka uh, Kayak Prowler, the Big Game 2, though. The original Prowler is much narrower than the Big Game 2, and you're going to have better stability with that Big Game 2. It also paddles really well. I had one myself. That was actually my second kayak I had, and loved that thing. You know, I went across Mosquito Lagoon pretty much every weekend, which is a two-mile trek one way. I've been through the no motor zone in the banana river, which is basically a 10 mile trip round trip. And it was a great kayak. You could stand from it, no issues tipping over or anything like that. Uh, unless you run over manatee, which I did one time. Uh, it was right when I launched in the morning, three feet of water, saw him right in front of me. It was too late. He freaked out. I freaked out and I went in the water. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those things are powerful. Like they're yeah. shockingly fast and powerful for, uh, yeah just looking at him in the water. Did you have the GoPro going at that, that point? No, it was pitch blackout. Like oh, I had my man, headlamp man. on and I saw the gray mass in front of me at the last minute and it was, it was over. <laughs> but um, another thing was stability. Your kayak's only as stable as you are. Uh, your balance is going to like each person has different balancing capabilities. I know people that can stand on some of these racing kayaks, which is kind of crazy because they're not really made for standing. So it's really going to come down to your balance. I highly recommend practicing your balance. You know, the first time you get out there, even if it is a kayak that's made for standing up, it's going to be tough for uh, you to stand up. It's just going to feel awkward, especially if you're used to sitting down all the time. But your body will get used to that over time. And um, going back to the different brands, uh, the Vibe Sea Ghost is okay i think the prowler big game 2 is more stable but it has a bit of a higher price tag and if you have the money i would highly recommend going with a hobie outback and that leads into the pedal drive question i was kind of steering away from pedal drives for a while just because i mainly fish in like you know a foot and a half of water and i thought the pedals or the the fins would get in the way but and there's be, some and ways. because your biceps are the size of most people's, uh, you know, bodies, <laughs> and you don't mind uh, paddling. <laughs> yeah, my legs weren't weren't too strong, uh, but that's another thing you get used to. <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's ways around that. I mean, the fins go right up to the bottom of the hole. Uh, when you spread the pedals, the fins go flat up against the hole. So when you get shallow, they call it flutter kicking. And basically, you're just doing this with your feet back and forth, just pumping the pedals, and that keeps the fins up against the body. And they're basically just flapping up against the body, and that still allows you to move. And I've done that in like a foot of water with no problem. But the biggest thing I realized was that I'm mainly using the pedals just to get to where I'm fishing. Once I get to where I'm fishing, I'm standing up, I'm using a push pole. So the pedals are, I just take them out, put them in the tank behind me. And I don't use them again until um, I'm ready to go back to the launch. So pedal drives are definitely worth it. Much better in the wind and current. Uh, they get you to your spot quicker and you're less fatigued when you get there. So you can actually enjoy uh, fishing without being beat. So um, yeah, if I had to recommend a uh, stable option, lower price, I would definitely go with the Ocean Kayak Prowler Big Game too. And if you want to spend a little bit more money, definitely go with that pedal drive with the Hobie Outback. Right, you Wyatt, what are you? Uh, what are your thoughts? What are you? What are you fishing out of Wyatt? I can't remember. So I've got uh, the most basic Pelican 120. I'm looking at getting a pedal drive myself, just because up here in coastal Carolina, you have to travel pretty long distances to get to where you want to fish. I have been trying out some of these kayaks, and I, I'm with Tony. I, I'm willing to wait to save for that Hobie. Super stable, super comfortable. I love the seat on it. The pedal drive is fantastic. Um, some of these other pedal drives, something that I don't believe we touched on, most of them are propellers. I believe Hobie is one of the only ones that actually has the, the flippers or paddles. The others are spinning propellers. And those tend to, 
to really get you moving a lot faster. So like Tony said, you're not really going to be using them when you're fishing just to get you to and from your spots. And, and that's what I like the most about the Hobie and that drive system. So if you can, I'm, I'm with Tony, save up for that Hobie for sure. Yeah, now Here's, um, go ahead, Tony. Right. I was going to say uh, vibe has a new kayak coming out. We just saw it at uh, ICAST last year when they uh, pretty much premiered it, but it has the option to put a pedal drive in it and they have different, um, I believe they have different, um, what would you call it? Consoles that you can put into it to use different pedal drives. So I asked the owner and he said, you can use the Hobie Mirage drive in that kayak. And the kayak itself, I think is only like 1200 and they sell their own pedal kit for another, uh, I believe it's five or 600 bucks. So, for less than two thousand dollars you can get a pedal drive kayak which is really good uh considering i mean most pedal drive kayaks are going for at least twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars uh so i'd highly recommend checking that one out i believe they were on pre-order um i don't know what's going on with all this virus stuff maybe delayed a little bit more but uh, if you can get your hands on one of those i think they'd be a, a great option lower price and you have the option to pedal or uh, paddle you know i'll add one more to the mix is the uh, the old town outback pdl so i i have one of those and i don't go kayak fishing all that often but it, when i do I, I my favorite way to do it is to put the kayaks in a boat and then go way back in the back country like to spots that are just really are really far and really can't paddle to and so i, I do it with my with my dad a lot and this uh this pdl in particular it's it's like uh, just over 10 feet long it, it paddles it's like super easy to go long distances and it's easy to store number two which is the the really convenient thing and it's way more stable than my, my dad has a, an out or a, a hobie a pedal but it's it's one of the thinner ones built for speed and although that's much more expensive than the outback like my dad now won't even fish out of his hobie anymore he, he likes this uh this old town because it's smaller right it's just it's easier to manage and it's more stable so but just know that as you as it gets wider and it doesn't get longer it's not quite as good for going super long distances like what tony's doing going across the mosquito lagoon you know two miles plus each way that's a lot of pedaling um but but if you're not going super long distances and you want to save a little bit of money then then that uh that pdl is is, is good I, i've been really happy and that's granted that's the only one that i've fished out of that has the pedal but that's a game changer going from pedal drive to whether it's a propeller like the PDL or the, the flipper things. Um, it is a game changer compared to using just a paddle only. Yep. All right. When a pivot, I, I saw uh, Gregory Ramco. Is that like AFCO? No. That's what's first, here. first he says, what do you think about the Z-Man chin lock hooks? And he also wanted to know, why Tony, you really think about it? Do does this custom Chin scent locks. in the Alabama leprechaun attract chicks? It was his question, and that is to be determined. Uh, well, the fish, depends the on the fish you'll catch with it will help you attract chicks. But that's uh, right. <laughs> I'm not sure about the. Uh, I don't know about using that that scent as a cologne, but you know, sixty well, percent of the time it might work every time. Who knows? Well, I, I will say that it's kind of ironic that you know we've been testing these out for the last you know few months. And ever since we've been testing these out with this custom scent, Luke's Luke's had a girl in the boat. So I'm just saying, and I'm just saying. And since we mentioned that, I might as well throw it out too. Like she's never used the, the like she she's she's fished a lot growing up. She's she does has done mostly live bait fishing, not much lures. And so I've been obviously been I don't do my live well hasn't worked in like a year and a half. So no live bait on my boat. Um, and I've been giving her like this, this Alabama leprechaun. And the first time I, I, I rigged it up on her, on her setup, she caught three trout that were over 20 inches. Like somebody who had no idea how to like, no experience using those. Like it, it definitely, well, obviously I taught her how to retrieve it and everything. And if you, if you get these, we'll teach you all that stuff as well. But, uh, but they clearly work and it's not just like a, a one-off, um, works, works for everybody. As long as it's rigged properly, that's, that's the key. It's not rigged properly if it's terrible, just like just like pretty much all soft plastic jerk baits. Yep. If it is rigged properly, it's it's really hard to beat. Someone also asked, are, are you gonna cut your hair? What does she think about your hair? 
Um, you know, she actually, uh, I was having a mullet coming on down there. It was getting, cause I haven't had a haircut. I think it was in November. I think last time I got a haircut. So it's <laughs> been a while. So I had like, a bit of a mullet going on to the point where if it was a windy day, I could feel it, feel it flapping. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. Is it flapping on your, on your butt or you're just your neck? <laughs> <laughs> no, so she actually, she actually cut it. She gave me, you know, she spruced it up a little bit. Cause you know, I don't think only barbers are open. So like now I really have, I have a uh, no, no, no shot. So anyhow, yeah, it's growing, man. It's uh, it's been good luck. <laughs> I saw somebody ask about if uh, what what does it take for Luke to cut his beard? Who was that? Let's All right, let's go to the uh, the uh, what the chin lock. What was that? Yeah, the the chin lock hooks. So this these are the chin lock hooks right here. They're very similar to the Mustad grip pin, and basically it's a swim bait hook, but it has that keeper up top. They work really good for Z-Man baits. However, they don't work really well for other types of soft plastics because you have to slide the soft plastic over that weight. And then you also have to slide it over that keeper and it just tears up those other baits. So uh, they work well for Z-Man. I'll go ahead and show you a quick demonstration here, but it's basically Ooh, go through the top. That Z-Man bait, that, that don't care. That Z-Man bait don't and care. And if you have line on there, it'll stay on. But <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> so pop it on there slide it up carefully this time so it doesn't pop off the hook and as you can see that keeper keeps that bait on there In, any other soft plastic would have ripped off with tony so yeah. it's great for z-man i don't like it at all for non-z-mans so they rig up really nice and a lot of people have asked if we're gonna have the z-man slam shady back so right now, like as of this second, there are four inches. We ran out. We we have a few more. Uh, they'll probably be gone by tomorrow, maybe even today. Now that I said that, so there's some four inches. There's definitely some five inch descended ones, which are going to be great uh, right now with springtime coming on with some um, some big old trout going to be inhaling those things. And we are out of the three inch. We have the three and a half slam shaded 2.0. And we will get, be getting a whole lot more. Z-Man shut down right now. I don't know if you guys know that most of these tackle companies are, are either on a one-man crew or they're shut down completely until this, you know, until this virus thing goes away or gets better. So uh, we definitely have more Slam Shadies coming with Z-Man in all the sizes. It just, it honestly might be August, just setting the right expectations. It ain't happening this month or the next month or the next month. Uh, there's still a ways out. They're going to have a lot of catch up to do. And as much as I like to think that we're, you know, first on Z-Man, uh, I mean, you know, they're, they're worldwide now. And, uh, and they have massive accounts like Bass Pro and, and Dix, et cetera, that they have to service. And so we, we are on their list. They have made a promise that we will have the Slam Shady back. I just, I know it's not going to be overnight. Uh, and because we were selling so many things to you guys, it, it, I believe it was their number one top selling color the slam shady is a top selling cover co color for all of minnow z across every single channel that z-man has and that also means we got to print off a lot of them we got to make a ton of them and that just kind of like puts a, a wrench in all of their all their stuff so it's been it's been crazy who would have thought that uh this thing would have worked so well we knew it worked well we had no idea it was going to take off the the way it did and now we're at is it 52 species luke i know jake's working on a blog I don't know. I think it's, it's like 50. 52 or 53 species as of today, uh, different species that have been documented, landed, caught on the slam shady. So keep them coming. Pretty much it. I mean, any fish that, that eats bait fish that are around three to four inches is going to, is going to hit this lure, right? It's, That's like saying any American that likes to eat pizza. It's like 99% of us. <laughs> Minus a few vegetarians, just like carp, right? We had, I don't think we even caught a carp yet. Take away the vegetarians and the, the vegans, and you got pretty much the rest of the people. All right, so let's go. Let's go to the next question. We have uh, Jacob Miller go go in order from when they came in. I think we got out of order for a little bit. So, uh, question came in: Have you guys used any of the Florida fishing product reels? Pros and cons. Yeah, I'm supposed um, to call um, call them back today. They called me yesterday. Oh, right, cool. Yeah, Tony, why have you guys used those reels yet? No, I haven't used them. Neither have I. So I have, uh, so I, that's why I left. I went to get, I went to get uh, part of my real graveyard right here. Big that's old couple full of them. <laughs> testing out a bunch of reels. And is it a graveyard? Meaning like they're all 
They're all shot? Yeah, I don't treat them very well, Joe. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I, I never take them apart. Sometimes they get, you know, I do a lot of fishing for my, my paddle board, and that means that a lot of reels will take a quick dip in the water accidentally. And so I don't clean it out. I just keep using it just to see how good they do. Um, Florida Fishing Products, I, I like their smaller reels better. And supposedly, so I did have one issue that I, I just uh, wanted to highlight, but this is one of their older models. So I was tarpon fishing, got in some, some nice tarpon, have a, a cool video on it. But uh, they were crushing artificial lures like I've never seen before. Usually I catch them live bait. They were hitting every lure we had. I didn't have anything big, or I had all my big stuff on my live bait rig. And so I was using the 4,000. And if you look closely, like as I was fighting the tarpon, is the reason I'm super bum I was super bummed is the, the actual handle part broke. So but supposedly that's been fixed in new ones. Um, so, so I immediately, I was like, oh, Florida Fisher Products, I lost a big tarp and ride the boat because of it. But the newer model, supposedly, that this was an issue that they found realized. So they fixed it and they have, uh, I don't, I haven't been a big fan of how heavy they are. Uh, however, the pros are that they are good, they are good reels. They, they, they're, they're solid, like they, they're made out of the, the at least the, the normal ones, the heavy ones are made out of metal. I'm not sure about the, the lighter ones. So very strong, they have very strong drag, like even the 2000 has like 20 pounds of drag or more. Um, but the reason why I don't use them very often is that they're just more expensive than a lot of others that are good reels as well. Like I, the fact that I, I end up dunking a lot of my reels, I now, I don't buy anything more than $100. And my fishing hasn't gone down and I feel less bad when they get wet because these reels I'm buying myself, and at least for the most part, so that I can truly give unbiased uh, guidance on them without feeling guilty so yes they're good reels their customer service is awesome like had i mentioned this to them they surely would have sent me another one um so their customer service is amazing they're a small company they're, they're out of tampa which i like uh good reels but um i personally don't buy i don't i now don't buy anything over a hundred dollars just because i know it's going to get wet and I, i'm not going to get quite as upset and even even like these cheap reels or i'd say I can't, I can't call it cheap, but less expensive, like this Pisca Fund, which is like a little small company. Um, there, this was like 60 bucks or $65, a 2000 size reel. You know, I just use 10 pound line. So all I need is three pounds of drag and I'm good. Every reel has three pounds of drag. And I, I even caught a 42 inch snook on this. I've caught multiple, you know, overslot reds on it. And it's just a little 2000 reel. And it was just a good reminder that the reel isn't nearly as important as the rod. The rod, the reel won't help you catch more fish. It'll help you catch more, more fish. It'll help you catch fish more uh, comfortably, but it won't help you catch more fish in most cases. The rod is the more important thing of the two. The rod helps you cast, accuracy, feel of strikes, hook sets. So I recommend putting more focus on the rod than the reel. So yeah, I what I will say, what we like about really love about the Florida fishing products is just, is the people and the fact they listen, right? Cause that, that handle thing, that was two plus years ago. And right. since then, I mean, they apparently they fixed that. I mean, they listen to you, right? The real people, you can actually call them up on the phone and say, Hey, this happened or fix this. So from what I've seen, they fixed the handle thing completely and they made incredibly much lighter reels. I don't know that they're as light as they're, like the CI4 yet, but I mean, it's night and day from where they were. So, so their, and, new one, their new one, I am excited about. I felt it at ICAST. They, they, they weren't selling it yet. And I saw, that's going to be the next expensive reel that I buy. Expensive meaning over $100. But it felt like a CI4. I, they had a casting pond there. Like that one did feel really good. And that was after they fixed the, the, uh, the handle issue. So that would be, that's the one that, that's like the, the next, uh, like nice reel that I'm, that I'm thinking about. The one that I probably won't take on my paddleboard because it's like, a, I feel like I, I've been dropping way too many reels when I'm on that darn paddleboard. But, uh, well, you're yeah. on a surfboard, dude, is the problem. It's just like what Tony said. Someone can watch Luke go out on that little, it's, it's essentially a, a surfboard, like a longboard. It's made for. And like 99% of people are going to fall off that thing the first time they try it. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, rod reel, like I, I just put, I've been putting way more focus on rods and uh, just because they, they are, I think the most important tool for us, especially if you're an artificial lure person, rods are, are it. 
But if you're live bait or cut bait, the rods don't matter. Then it's the reel, right? So like that's, I think that's a good decision point as well, as far as what to put the focus on. So if you're, if you're doing live bait, cut bait, then, the, then get a nice reel because the, you don't need the casting accuracy. Um, if, especially using circle hooks, you don't need to be setting the hook. It's, you just need a good drag. Your drag is gonna get a lot of, a lot of work out. All right, let's, let's switch over to um, boat maintenance because that's always been a popular one. I know Deeks did that whole little mini course for our insider members on, on exactly what he does because that guy is trailering his boat. Uh, do you remember how many miles? It was some crazy amount. Of, he's basically going two hours a day uh, total um, every single day, 300 plus days, of, so whatever that means, um, tens of thousands of miles. But Steven says, I just bought a bay boat. Do I need to wash it thoroughly with soap each time? Even uh, going fishing the next, even I'm going fishing the next day, or just rinse it with water. I'm new to saltwater fishing. Let's apply that to kayaks as well. Wh who's that one for? Sorry, I'm re reading comments. Uh, it, let's just say you, since you uh, you have a boat, you keep on the skiff. You're using it every day. So the question was, if I'm if I go out my boat, I fish all day. I know I'm fishing the next day or the day after. Do I still need to wash it down with soap or just spray it down with water? So my boat sees soap about, uh, maybe I'm not the best one to answer, <laughs> but my boat sees soap about once every four or five months. It's like kind of like, kind of like your body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, Luke takes a shower, but it means just getting in the shower. Yeah. I seriously, I, I crashed, I crashed over there because we were filming that early morning. I was like, dude, where's your, do you have soap, soap and shampoo? And he's like, yeah, I think it's in the garage somewhere. <laughs> Dude, remember, remember our first Gasparilla trip? It was a week long, and it was uh, you know, the smelliest person got the most fish, and that was just a, that's true. Well, that yeah, that was extreme. Like we, you know, after a year of doing this Gasparilla trip, we went like 15 years total, and like we you know we we don't go on the mainland. We try to get as stinky as possible. No showers allowed, and and finally we said, all right, I'm I'm going to take this next level. I'm not even going to bring a toothbrush for a week, and uh, dude, that got that got nasty. That got pretty hairy. And, uh, and then the next year we decided to bring girls and yeah. we kind of like, all right, we probably want to bring some soap and toothbrush and some toothpaste. <laughs> Why it's like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so back, back to the question. So I, when I first got my boat, I was, I would rinse it with soap every trip after every trip, I would flush it after every trip. And, uh, and lately I, I haven't been and, and it's really, there really hasn't been a noticeable difference. I mean, as, as long as the boat is a saltwater boat that, like I just, I just spray, I, I 100% of the time spray down with fresh water. Um, I don't like using soap right now. Mine's on a boat lift. I don't like using soap over the canals. And I, I just, I, it, it hurts me to see, um, especially when I can smell that there's like, like Clorox and bleach and stuff and it's washing in the boat. Obviously when you wash it down and go straight in the canals, I do not like that at all. So I practice what I preach. I don't use any chemicals on my boat. It's on the lift. It, whatever I put on there is going right in the canal. If I don't want in the canal, I don't, it's not going to my boat. So I do hundred percent water and, and that's it. And, and it's, and it's, and I just get a scrub brush, right? If there's like blood or something, um, if I'm fishing, like catch a lady fish, right? Like they start shaking sometimes like blood, little small blood droplets get everywhere. The best thing to do is just, just to be mindful of that and, and just don't let it dry. Like I just get, I just have a bucket or a, a gallon thing on my boat and I just wash it down. Like I get the blood off when it's wet. That way you don't have to scrub it off when you get back to the dock. Um, so, so again, uh, like I just recommend, especially if you're on a lift, but even if you're not right, that runoff is going to go somewhere. And, and I, like if whatever you can, just don't use chemicals. And, and it's surprising how clean a boat can stay without chemicals. So I think that's the biggest misconception is that you have to, put all sorts of stuff on it. The reality is you don't, as long as you just don't let a bunch of blood or, or guts or stuff dry on the deck, then it's surprisingly easy and effective to clean with just water. So. Yeah. The, my, the sooner point. you clean it, the easier it's going to be to clean. Like even when, when I was fishing on Luke's boat, I kept a rag with me. And if like blood got on the deck or something, I would just stick the rag in the water, wipe it off. That way, at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to clean off. But um, as far as kayaks go, I'll touch on that. You would almost think, or I see a lot of people that kind of neglect their kayaks and they're made of plastic. And when salt water dries on plastic over time, it makes that plastic uh, very brittle, especially when it's out in the sun. So I wash it off as soon as I get off the water. I actually keep 
you can get it on Amazon. It's a, uh, it's a water tank. It's like a four gallon water tank. You plug it into your cigarette uh, adapter in your car or truck, whatever. And you can spray off your kayak when you get off the water. And that, that has definitely helped just that short trip from driving to the water to your house where that salt water has now dried on your uh, kayak. And also uh, the sun's been hitting it over time. That's going to deteriorate your kayak. So highly recommend washing off your kayak as soon as you can uh, with soap and water. If you're going out like, you know, every weekend, every other weekend, if you're going out the next day, I'll just rinse, give it a quick, uh, quick rinse with fresh water and you're pretty much good to go. But if it were me, I'd wash it off with soap and water again every other week. And if you're going out the next day, just fresh water. Then again, you also get a haircut more than every four months. So what do we got, Wyatt? What uh, what is I cut next, my own hair. So. Next question. You do? What the Floby? What are you using? A Floby? <laughs> oh, scissors and a, one of those electric thingies. <laughs> so good. You're a real renaissance man. What do we got, Wyatt? Any good questions? Yeah, I saw that uh, someone had asked about that knife that Hollywood was using. Uh, it looked like it was Tom Ray. Captain Tom Ray was asking about that knife that is on the Insider Discount Program. That is one of the best knives I've seen. Super sharp. Oh, we I'm got it on there now? One. It's on there yeah. for sure? It's, yep. it's on, yeah, it's on the gear. So it, it's on the – we have basically have two online stores. One is for the tackle. The other one is for apparel. That's with AFCO. And so it's on the apparel one which is saltstronggear.com. I, Tom, I told you, Tom sent me a text. I said, let me look into it. AFCO guys are busy over there in California with all the virus stuff. Apparently they made it happen. AFCO, if you're watching, thank you guys. And thank you, Tom Ray, for being an insider. Remember Captain Tom Ray, everybody. Catch a Ray Charters. The dude's, dude's a maniac on the boat. Yeah, he's a character. He's, he's a lot of so fun. Much fun. Yeah, thank you, uh, Tom. So, yeah, check that out. That's um, every other discount we have on Tackle is – on our shop page or the insider, you know, private shop page, that one in particular, you will find that at saltstronggear.com. And we're, we're going to try to consolidate this stuff because I know it's confusing. Hey, why do they have two different shop pages? We're trying to figure that out in terms of consolidation. Aggravation. I wanted to, uh, sunscreen lotion. So Mike T. Phillips, he said, when you all go fishing, tell us where you're fishing at, please. Oh, we do that, oh, Mike. Yeah, we, we actually do that. <laughs> and we've done that for four years and I've made a log of every trip too. So there's uh, the insider club has all that information, not only the future stuff and current, but all the past that is actually organized and filterable by season and species. It is by far the best catalog of inshore fishing for redfish, sea trout, snook flounder that's out there. And so it's growing, that. it's growing like crazy. I mean, it, it's and we didn't we're not smart guys we didn't design this on purpose knowing there's going to be a coronavirus five years after we started salt strong but right now i mean there's never been a better time in the history of america or really the world to to like use the internet to do online education to to master or try to excel or become better in something that you love I mean, my kids are downstairs all three of them right now we're doing online e-education watching their teacher and we've been preaching that for five years. And yeah, we actually go show our spots. Uh, some people don't like that. Uh, they think it's cheating and people need to go figure out their own spots. Disagree. I believe everyone had a mentor. Everyone had some father, grandfather, or some friend that taught them the best knots to use and taught them how to go find fish. And we're just trying to shorten the learning curve. So yeah, we'd love to have you in there on the Insider Club. We, uh, we believe we have shortened the learning curve and, and hopefully can save you years, not just weeks or days, but years of time to go out there and catch more fish faster than ever. Now, this whole year for you insiders who've been watching, I know you love it, the smart fishing game plan, where 10 minutes every single Friday, usually Luke or Tony gets on a, a Zoom call like this, and, and, and actually I guess it's Camtasia, it doesn't really matter, same thing, and you get on an online map and actually show you where to fish, like based on all the trends we're seeing across the entire community from Texas all the way up to really Virginia, we actually get on a map and show you exactly where you should fish that coming weekend. Do it every single week. And that's on top of the 20% discounts and all those tackle stuff. So um, I think Gregory Ramco might have had a couple beers already at 12 o'clock. The guy is flowing. He's talking about flobies again now. Come on, Gregory. <laughs> I love you, brother. Yeah, so another question um, next on the list is um, Dave Morales Sr. He, he asked, you know, he – 
he was on a recent trip with Slam Shady and a fish inhaled it and it went, just went way deep. And then any suggestions on how to prevent this from happening? You know, we did lose a couple fish. I did try to set a hook earlier, but then I was missing the bite. So, um, so and then th thanks guys for all that you do. So why you wanna knock this one out, this is really about, you know, when to set the hook, field the strike versus weight. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so, I mean, the big thing is making sure that there's not slack in your line. A lot of guys, when they're fishing with lures, they're, they're not actively managing their line. They'll be reeling and they'll give it pops and then they'll just sit. When you, get, especially with trout right now, we're seeing that they're hitting on the drop. So you've got your slam shady. This is the trout killer right now. As it's coming down, they're hitting on this drop. And most guys, what they'll do is they'll just finish reeling and then they'll just wait. What you should be doing when this drops is dip your rod tip and actively reel in that line because it still allows the bait to drop uh, instead of you continuing to reel and it would pop right back up. Drop the rod tip as you reel, you'll reel in that line, you have less slack and you'll feel right when that fish hits. So there's a little vacuum that a trout creates when it ambushes that bait from below. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes they're just gonna inhale it hard because they're hungry. Uh, there's not too much you can do there, but the best thing I would say is actively manage your line, make sure there's not slack, because the longer that you wait uh, between that strike uh, and setting the hook, the more likely it is to go further down their throat. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and the other part too, I'll, I'll handle as far as, um, you know, setting the mention setting the hook quickly and it was missing strikes. Oh, I think Luke froze on us for the, you guys watching. And we're listening to the podcast, so I will try to finish this sentence. I love Slam Shady. Slam Shady works for me. I love Slam Shady. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's, oh he's back. <laughs> I could hear you the whole time. I guess uh, something happened, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't what I was saying. <laughs> so what, um, what, what I've been doing is I've been filming. I've been filming the actual Slam Shady underwater. To, oh, to I, I knew he was going to bring up Slam Shady. Yeah, to, to, actually, to actually film the underwater strike to see exactly what happens. When a trout hits, it doesn't – it's very rare that a trout hits and misses. They, they hit they, – it's just like a snook, right? It's a suction. So they, they open up. That's why you feel a thump. They basically open their mouths and it goes in. It's, if, if that happens, you set the hook immediately, it's, you're not going to miss many, many strikes. What's, what's hitting that you miss are little jacks and, and ladyfish are notorious – or they're just going in there and slashing and they miss most of the time. So I recommend for preventing deep, deep hooked fish, which is the number one reason why, why released fish don't live. We, we had a podcast with a scientist who, who's done catch and release um, studies and to the point where they literally get trout and wipe off every bit of slime they have and put it in a tank and watch Do not it. try this at home. Yeah, don't do that. But, but those trout live, like those trout live, like, after like a, that was like a week or two, I can't remember the details, but it, it grew all the slime back. It was good. The mortality rate on a, on, a, on a trout that was hooked deep, especially if it caused blood or forgotten the gills or even the stomach, was like 99%. Regardless if you took it out or if you cut your line, it like it, it would, if it's hooked deep, a trout in particular, it's probably not going to live. So it's on, it's on us to make sure that we don't hook them deep. So number one, just like what Wyatt said, is to pay really close attention on the, on the downfall. And most of the, the trout will hit as soon as it starts going down. They're on their way up, coming to get it. It starts coming down, they, they grab it. Um, so if you're not paying attention, you're gonna have like a one or two second delay, which will give them time to, to suck it down. Also, number two, use braided line. Braided line is, is shocking. I was really sl uh, slow to, to switch from my beloved mono to, uh, to braid. As soon as I did, I realized how much better I could feel everything with braid. And then number, number three would be a sensitive rod. I, like for many years, I put, I put most of my money towards reels and I would get whatever rod would fit my budget. And then I switched, like lately I've been doing the opposite where I get a really nice uh, rod and, and it's a, good, a nice sensitive rod, fast action, not one of those wet noodles, uh, you know, fast action rod that's at least like medium power. You can feel everything. If you have braided line, you can feel the, the smallest little pinfish just tip, uh, tapping at it. So um, those three things will, will significantly decrease the amount of deep hooks. Obviously, there's no way to prevent it ever from happening, but it makes a big difference. If you're not using braided line, Luke, I got a joke for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? 
1992, they want their line back. Who uses mono still? Come on. That's, well, that's good for tarpon. You know, you need it for tarpon. Um, but but for, for artificial lures, especially with spinning tackle, I, I mean, it's a game changer. It's, it's really the reason why, like, I used to be 100% bait casters. And because spinning, like, mono is spinning, just as it gets memory, the casting performance just plummets. But, but braid, like, you know, yes, it's more expensive on a per yard basis. But on a per year of usage basis, like braid, I think is even even more um, uh, more cost effective. I have one of these reels that has been my one of my main reels, and I've had Power Pro on it for over a year, and it's I've been working, I've been fishing it hard, and it's still still working. And your line lasts longer than your reels do. <laughs> what else uh, we got? We got uh, we have to we have to bowl. We actually have a call about some new tackle, ironically, that we're bringing to the insiders for 20% off here at one. So what, what else we got? Wyatt, see. You, Luke, yeah, I see. I got, got a question from Mike Kilburn uh, about what the best color to use in darker water, not grassy. And he's talking about some, some of his spots are muddy. Um, I can touch on it real quick. The colors I'm using, really, people think that white's not a great color to use in, in dark, muddy water. I'm Laughable. up here in North Carolina. I mean, that is completely false. I've caught more fish on the Slam Shady than really any other color. But uh, it really, uh, if, you're, if you can't get your hands on a Slam Shady, unfortunately, they're super popular and they're, they're sold out. But colors like this, uh, this new penny where the sparkle is in it, any kind of flash or foil, um, or some darker colors like this root beer here uh, with the chartreuse tail, that's a, it's another good color to use. Just that flash, that foil tends to get a lot of attraction, but I think more than the color uh, is the vibration. That's why I really like paddle tails and dark water. But Tony, Luke, what do you guys think? Yeah, dark colors, dark water, light colors, and clear water, just to keep it simple. And of course, there's Slam Shady, any color. <laughs> any color water conditions mm. yeah i've been i've been the reason why uh like i've been using it for if i'm doing a bait fish imitation like my personal thing i just like to keep things simple like if, um, my i used to have to get every color of possible of everything and lately if i'm fishing if i want to imitate a bait fish i just use white like i just keep it simple and the slam shady in particular uh, because i mean the, the sign i read this book called what fish actually see and it talks about you know like literally what fish actually see. And, and the reason why white is, is, is surprisingly effective um, is because the fish don't see the color white, they see the color of the water that's in between them and the, and the lure. White just reflects, right? So if it's dark water, they see a dark, they see like if it's dark brown water, they're gonna see a brown, a brown bait fish, right? Just a little bit lighter than the true color of the water. So and if, but if it's clear water, right? Then they, now they see a light color bait fish. So like, so I've been, I just been using white. If I'm using bait fish, I use white. If I'm imitating a shrimp, particularly a sh like in grassy areas or, or muddy bottom, like dark bottom, then I'll use something dark. And that's, that's literally it. I use light and dark and really nothing in between. And you catch a lot of fish. Uh, what about jig head color, Stephen asked? I know we've been using a lot of those trout eyes. I've used some of the saltwater assassin red one. Um, they're just that red jig head too. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't noticed a difference in the, in the jig head. I either use plain lead gray color or red. That that's about all I use because red sort of Im simulates injury. Like if a injured bait fish or something like that, those fish can pick up on that red color, but I don't think color is too important with that. Yeah, why, what were you holding up there? Is that trout eyes? Yeah, these are the three trout eye colors that I'll use. Um, really, honestly, I think the only color that I've ever seen a difference on, and this could really just be a fluke, but in really clear water, the red eye, I feel like generally works better. And especially down in Florida where the water is a lot clearer, uh, snook and trout will definitely pick up on that if you're fishing on a sandy area in a beach that that red just stands out in clear blue or light green uh, against that white sand more than any other color jig head that I've seen. Are you are you laughing at Gregory's comment? Yeah, there's there's a handful left. Yeah. <laughs> and Nick's ripping on your Jansport backpack that came with the Trapper Keeper. <laughs> Luke still has the same backpack from high school. Oh, it actually is a new one. The one because I used to take it night fishing. Uh, we used to fish uh, Sebastian at night all the time. And uh, that was just, that was my tackle box, just threw all my stuff in there. But 
all the salt exposure, like the, the zippers were just totally frozen. What did so, it do to your what did it do to your trapper keeper and the garbage pail kid stickers that were on there? Yeah, no go, man. Game over. <laughs> Why it's like what's a garbage pail kid sticker? But uh but yeah, there's the the sports like it's lifetime warranty and uh so yeah, I got, got a new one. Same color. Yeah. Tony, do you know what a garbage pail kid is? Yeah. You do? <laughs> Tony shared yeah. with us yesterday that uh he used to be in a break dancing, so I, I figured you knew what garbage pail was. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the break dancing and I was in a metal band. <laughs> and, and, Wyatt, the day. and Wyatt was uh, a, a, basically a professional fencer. Uh, not a guy who installs fences in your yard, but he actually went junior Olympics for fencing. Yep. Learned all, yep. all kinds of stuff about you guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, any, let's get one more question. What do we got? Any, uh, any, any last question on here before we bolt? Because we have to jump on this other call about tackle, ironically. Once again, you're not an insider. 20% off. Every, literally, we have, I believe, every single main brand out there now uh, for our insider members. Just one more reason to join. What do we got, Mr. Wyatt? Austin Maynard asks, uh, what's our favorite rod? So, I guess we can all go through, tell, tell what our favorite rod is. Well, I'll just preface that I do whatever Luke and Tony tell me to do. So I got into custom rods recently, and if you ask anybody that has a custom rod, they're going to say that's their favorite rod because you can customize it to what you want as opposed to finding something off the shelf. Uh, so um, the rod I'm using is a Century. It's called the Weapon Junior, and the guy that I had it uh, made from, it's from Black Pelican Custom Rods, and those Century rods are, are awesome. They're super strong, super sensitive. And when I'm out there on the water, I usually bring like two or three rods and I've been switching lures to that rod just because I want to use that rod. <laughs> That's what you caught so, that, uh, that snook on, right? The one you wrapped around the dock 10 times. Yeah. My, my first fish on that rod was a 43 inch red and it fought that thing like a champ. <laughs> it's a seven foot six, uh, it's a fast action rod. And it has a lure rating from quarter ounce up to, I believe, one and three quarter ounce. So you can throw pretty much anything on that, on that century rod. So if I had to choose, I'd go with a custom rod. But um, I actually do have, it's like a $50 rod from Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's so you, have, all, you have a $600 rod and a $50 rod. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, if you really like expensive rods, definitely go with custom. But if you're on a budget, one of my favorite rods is this $50 rod from uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's called uh, All Star. Uh, it's their classic, I believe, inshore rod. And they work awesome. I actually stepped on it on my buddy's boat. I stepped on right above the handle. Like the, the rod was leaning up on against the seat. And I went to step down off the cooler full weight on it, and it didn't break. <laughs> so it's a pretty solid rod for 50 bucks. What, what, what you got? I would say probably my favorite rod. I really do love those all stars, but I I think if I had no budget, I would buy some more G Loomis E set E six X inshore series. Those those rods are great. I love the the court. It just feels really comfortable in my hand. Um, I've used a lot of rods, and I would say that one's got the most comfortable uh, feel to it. And then in terms of performance fantastic i've got the uh the medium light i like it for finesse fishing i'm looking to get another one for more heavy applications uh probably the medium fast as well but those i mean those rods are fantastic i love them yeah they're solid i have one of those it's solid but i will say my favorite if i had to pick one like and it's and it's for a unique reason that doesn't get as much uh attention as i feel it deserves particularly those of us who use uh weedless soft plastics a lot is this is a tfo and this is the TFO Pro. I've, 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 I use it in a lot of videos. Uh, I've been using it for like five years now. I've been, I've been a big fan. It's, it's, uh, it's affordable too. So it's, it's like a hundred bucks and it's, you know, 20% off if you're an insider. Um, the reason it's just a good blank. It's a, just a quality rod. It's not like the, the CI4 like, or the, the E6 X's probably have a, a better blank, surely have a better blank. But what I really like about this is the, is the actual hook keeper. So I'll, the fact that it's unique, I um, uh, hope you can see it in front of my, behind my shirt, or in front of my shirt, but instead of having the, the loop that you thread the hook, like the hook point through, great for hooks, great for normal hooks, great for lures that aren't weedless, 
not so great at all for a soft plastic that is weedless because the hook point is in the bait itself. So with this type of hook, all I have to do to get the get the Alabama leprechaun uh, with the with the hook. So I literally just get the the arm of the of the hook and just slide it on, and there it's it's ready to go. And so if I'm paddleboard fishing, if I'm sight fishing paddleboard where I'm paddling, I have the rod behind me on a rod holder. I can see a fish and not take my eyes off of it. All right, I put my paddle down to my side, and then I reach back, grab the rod without ever losing track of the fish. I don't, it's already weedless. And so all I do is I just slide it out and I'm ready to go. So not many rods have this type of keeper and it drives me crazy. That's why I always go back to this rod. I wish some, some rods with you know, more, I guess, more pricey, more expensive uh, blanks would have that. But, but that, that alone, it's a, a unique discriminator, particularly I, I love sight fishing and that's why it's a big deal to me. So for that reason, the TFO would have my, my number one vote for an all round basis. Cool. All right, guys, it's a 102. We have a call to jump on. So just want to thank all of you. This has been really fun. If you like it, comment down below, let us know if you want us to keep doing these uh, every week. Maybe we'll keep doing, doing these Tackle Tuesdays because I know we only got to like half the questions. And what we'll do after this is um, myself and Luke and Tony and Wyatt, we'll go through the comments that we didn't have time to answer. And we'll just start doing, we'll basically just do videos to answer those questions. We'll put them on our YouTube channel and obviously Facebook and our blog. So Tony, Luke, Wyatt, we were talking earlier about, hey, what, uh, what kind of tips should we do? I think we basically have our answer right there below. So let us know if you guys like these, any other questions that you have, you want us to go out there and film specific tips for you on. We are in content creation mode since this is on lockdown. We're still going out there by ourselves and just doing some, uh, some video footage. So um, let us know, we'd love to hear from you. Can't thank you for all the support. If you're not an insider member yet, come on now. Join the club. Go to saltstrong.com. You'll see a place you can learn more about it. And uh, we're about to jump on this call, like I said, and uh, basically cutting some even steeper, better discounts for you and everything from sunglasses. I'm not going to name brands, but all the biggest names that you're probably already wearing from cast nets to rods, reels, lures, line. You got it. You want it. We got it. Peace. Yep, yep. Yeah, and if there is anything that, that we either said incorrectly or whatever, yeah, let us know as well. That's the cool thing about learning. It's a, it's a forever uh, fishing. Is, it's a forever learning experience. So, uh, Oh, yeah. I'm sure this is the internet, dude. Of course they're going to let us know if we said something wrong. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you, know, you don't have to ask people for that. Yeah, I, I never take offense to anything as long as it's, it's actually a, a critique and not just, you know, one was like, why do you, I can't remember what it was, but it, was, it had nothing to do with fishing. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we're, we're always about uh, learning different uh, – different thoughts and, and even different usages too, you know, things that we never even thought about. So like I've learned a ton from uh, listening to feedback from, from these videos. So yeah. Yep. Any feedback is much appreciated. Cool guys. Thank you for all the love, all the support. Be safe out there. Wash them hands. Come on now. We out. <laughs>